Okay, so today I biked over uh, 30 miles. It was like 34 miles or something um, on this on this route that I I saw it as the impossible route. The thing that I would work off, you know, I, I'd work towards it somewhere in the distant future, like you know, eons from now. And today, today I did it. And there's just some things that you learn through the process of failing, trying, succeeding, getting challenged, having new challenges, tripping over the same thing over and over again. These kinds of things are just something that you learn from, from the process of the battle. You know, we, we think of these, of these military, you know, geniuses not realizing that in order to know how something works, you have to have been exposed to it. And, you know, sometimes we go into it and, and you know, oh, I, I need to know everything before I can move forward. Or, and we kind of work ourselves into, into a bit of a rut um, because, you know, we spend all of our time maybe preparing without trying to get our hands dirty, you know, without that experience to go with it. And it kind of just... Uh, Messes it up, messes up our, our momentum. And this is what I'm getting at. Just a, a real quick idea here. Don't keep telling yourself you can never do it. Don't keep telling yourself you can never do it. The, the things you think, you will then say. And then the things that you say, you will become. It's, it's called a self-fulfilling pro prophecy. It's a self-imposed limit. The reason why you can't do it is because you said that you couldn't do it because you believed that you couldn't do it. See what I mean? And, and so then, therefore, you can't do it. And there's a lot of times when, oh, I, I can't do that, that's too hard. And if you just, when you're like doing something like, for instance, biking, um, oh, I, I can't make this, this is too far. Well, just focusing on, on, on just, just in front of you. You look out ahead of you, make sure you, nothing's, nothing dangerous is, is coming or anything like that. But then there's sometimes in, in biking, obviously assuming you're on you're on a safe road, where you know just look, just look a little bit in, in front of you instead of way far off where you you get discouraged. Now obviously that's not very safe if you're doing like um, a road with a lot of blind spots or you know uh, heavy traffic or those kinds of things. You know, <laughs> be aware of your surroundings. But I'm talking about when you're when you're facing those those just long roads where nothing is happening you can see off for you know 20 miles and it just nothing's happening um and you set yourself self-imposed limits and uh you, you aren't any good at anything because you say that you aren't any good at anything you know what i mean oh i could never learn how to play the guitar I could never stop doing this. My life would never be the same if, if, I, if I let go of this person that, that, that either died or left me or whatever. Um, you know, I, 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 I have to hold on because if I don't remember them, who will? You know, I have to keep their memory alive. I have to, I have to um, keep doing this because I've always done this. It's, it's this idea that this is my limit. This is my cage. And those self-imposed cages are oftentimes the most destructive because we give ourselves excuses for why we don't have to try better, for why we don't have to do better, for why we don't have to succeed. And we start telling ourselves, no, it's, our, it's my role to fail. And then we, anytime that we get the idea of succeeding and changing that mindset, it's no, we're being selfish. And, and so don't keep telling yourself you can never do it. Instead, take steps in the right direction. Instead of saying, I can never do this, just take a step in the right direction. What can I do about anxiety? What can I do about my addiction? Not just thinking about it, but, but actively progressing, actively pushing for it. And what we do is we look at the, at the mountain that we have to climb and we say, I can never make that mountain. What we don't understand is it's not all mountain. You've, first you've got a road that goes up to the foothills, then you've got... A little bit of rise then you got the foothills themselves and then you go up and down and up and down and so on and so forth until if you've ever driven up to the mountains you know this th there comes a part when it when it feels like am i even driving uphill anymore you know you see mountains all around you and stuff but when you look at the road it looks like you're just going straight and 
a lot of times when you're driving on a mountain road, it'll actually kind of get a little bit disorienting because you're like, am I flat right now or am I up? I mean, if you're biking, you know, <laughs> you know, but if you're in a car, it's a little bit harder. And so in, instead of this whole, I, I can't do this, I can't do it, do this, just, just take a step in the right direction. It's, it, it, it the, thou, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. You know, it's, you, you'll never get anywhere if you don't take that first step. It's, it's, it's a lot of stuff like that, that we hear these cliches and, and everything, but when they actually click in our heads and we start understanding it, it changes everything. Don't worry about the end product, just keep going. You know, this this ride today, I, I was I was having a lot of doubt last night. I was kind of worrying about it because I was like, I, I'm not going to make it and I'm going to fail and then I'm going to lose my momentum and get discouraged. And I don't want to get discouraged because I enjoy biking. Even if I don't make my limit, I still, I still enjoy it. And, you know, then I started thinking, you know, who cares if I make it? Just try. You, you, you try, you fail, you, you practice, you try again. You, you have to be willing to make mistakes in life. I mean, first off, you're not going to be perfect anyways. So you might as well embrace it and learn to roll with the punches. Um, so don't worry about the end product. Just keep going. Just just keep going. Um, I, I remember there was one part on my read today that I was just, it was just hard. I mean, it was hard. And everybody that was on this 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 part of it, you know, there was a bunch of people walking and stuff, just casual strolling on it. And it's not so bad if you're just casually strolling, but on a bike it was murder. And you're all, and you're trying to maintain speed and everything. Um, it took me one hour to get there, and an hour to get back. I mean, it just it was it was a very intense. <laughs> Very intense workout. I remember one time, there were a few times when I just felt like, okay, I, I've done good enough. I'm going to go ahead and stop. And then I just made this conscious decision. I started saying, I started saying stuff like this. I can do it. I can do it. And I was saying it out loud. And, and I know that as I was pa passing by people that they were probably thinking, that guy's a weirdo. But let me tell you something. They were just out for a pleasure stroll. And I conquered a goal. So it doesn't really matter what they think about me of how weird I am because I, I made it. I did it. And uh, so then my, as I started doing that, it, 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 the things that I was seeing in my head, I was distracted from them. I wasn't saying them anymore. The, I can't do it. So they were, they were gone. And then I started hearing my voice instead, and I, it was something to pay attention to. And I, instead of focusing on the pain, I was focusing on that. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And I just kept going. And I did it without, without any breaks. Uh, two hours straight in this really hard <laughs> ride without any breaks. And, and well, that's not entirely true. Uh, there was one part where there was a red light and I had to cross the street and I didn't really want to get hit. So I was like, I'll go ahead and wait. But that was like a 30 second delay. Maybe not even that. I don't know. Um, but anyways, this I can do it. I can do it. I'm almost there. And then as you start substituting those thoughts, then I felt confident. You know, and then, then it was more of just a reminder, I can do this. Look at how far I've already come. I can do this. You know, and then you start looking at your other past successes. You know, okay, well, I've done this, and that was just a little bit shorter than this, and that's, that's already halfway. So then I did this one, and that's about the same as this part, and that will take me another fourth of the way. See what I mean? And then you start adding stuff up, and you start looking at things as, as what you can do rather than all the things you can't do, and it just changes your outlook. 90% of your battle is a mental battle. 90% of it. A lot of people think that they're at their breaking point when the truth is they're not. They're nowhere near the breaking point. The, the problem is that they, that they train themselves to have a low, low pain threshold. So then it's their breaking point just because they've told themselves that that's their breaking point. You get what I'm saying? It's like there's a lot of basic training and, 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 and well, a lot of advanced training too that they give you uh, in military where um, a lot of it is just a mind game. That's all it is. I mean, it doesn't really do anything to help you get stronger per se. It's to help you break through that that self-imposed wall of I can't because you never reach your potential if you don't push what you can and can't do so just a few quick things here even if you don't make the goal that you had set you have something to be proud of for trying you have something for, uh, to be proud of for failing failing isn't isn't failure <laughs> failing is is a golden badge. I mean, you tried. That that's something that you should be proud of. 
And there's a lot of people who don't even try. You know, if, if you're trying to beat your addiction and you fail, it's a relapse. It's not the end of the world. It's, you get up and try again. You know, the, I know a lot of people who don't even try. This is just who I am. This is how I'll always be. Or they do the other thing. I can stop any time. It's like, okay, so why don't you stop? Well, because I don't want to. It's like, okay. Kind of a circle, I guess. Um, so it, here's the thing. I'm not telling you to stroke your arrogance. Oh, I'm so great. That's not what I'm saying at all. And I'm not saying that you need to deny that God has a role in your success. I'm not saying that at all. Not at all. I'm telling you to defeat the voice in your head that is preventing you from accomplishing your best. It's preventing you from accomplishing your best. And it's not something that your heart will give out, your legs will give out. There's a lot of times when you're f facing anxiety where it's like, oh, I'm going to have a heart attack. I can't do that. I'll die. You know, and all this stuff. And it's like, no, it's, it's your mind is winning that battle. And you, you have to take control of those thoughts. And instead of being subject to your, to your thoughts just running rampant, take control of them and utilize them for your purpose so that you can accomplish great things, so you can go the next step. Because check it out. Let's say, oh, you know, this is, this is, this is denying that God has a role. No, not at all. Let's say you're a missionary, okay? And you get arrested uh, for something. It doesn't matter what, right? It, well, hopefully for doing the right thing. Uh, and, you know, well, I... I I, I can't make this. I, I, I might as well, well just kill myself. Well, little did you know that if you had held out for four years that you would have gotten a, a chance to, you know, witness to your guards or something like that. See what I mean? Things that you never know what you're missing when you learn to, f to just give up. When, when, you, when you don't push yourself, you never even know what you're missing. And... Um, so it's, a, it's, it's preventing you from accomplishing your best. I know that there are others who can do better than me at cycling. I know that. I'm not trying to say that I'm the best cyclist in the world. That, that's nonsense. Uh, there's a 60-something-year-old man uh, that I'm uh, friends with up in Albuquerque that he did, uh, it was like a 4,000-foot climb or some ridiculously high climb like that, 50 miles in, in five hours. I mean, that's, that's phenomenal. That's just amazing. And... Uh, that that's not what I did. See what I mean? I'm not saying that I'm the best, and you don't have to be the best. The whole best that's just a that's that's a, that's a road that you don't even need to go down. Competition at its worst. Um, and so I know that there's there's some who are better than me, a lot better than me, and that's okay. It's totally fine because check this out, and I hope you get this. They aren't my competition. They are not my competition. I am my competition. Am I doing better today than I was yesterday? Am I trying harder? And I am I taking chances? We, we all want the safety and security, but check it out. Security and that, that's that's a lie. It's an illusion. Something that we tell ourselves that's not actually a reality. And there's a lot of things that, that in trying to keep in our safety, we miss life because life isn't safe. Life is meant to be taking chances. You know, take a take a chance, take a chance. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, anyways. Uh, you know, and so that's it's okay because I am my own competition. I have to learn to challenge myself. I have to always fight to do better. I have to fight to be better. I have to fight to think better. You know, here's the thing. For me, cycling isn't just a hobby. For me, it's, it's a lifeline that keeps me tethered on to my greater pursuits in life. And you might say, what are you talking about? Well, this is what I'm talking about. I used to be confined to one room of my house. I, I couldn't even go to the bathroom without severe anxiety. It was a single-wide mobile home. Those things are tiny. It was an old one, too. I, I'm not great with dimensions, but let's say it was, I don't know, 25 feet or 20 feet or something. I mean, it was tiny. Really, it was tiny. And uh, my wife had all kinds of just just a bunch of crap. And I tell you what... I think that the crap outweighed us <laughs> because the house was... So Anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, more of the story being, um, I, I used to be confined to one room, and I started biking um, as a way to just get out, but I was never able to get it real far. Just like maybe uh, maybe around the block if I was lucky. I mean, and I had to work up, with, work up to that. I remember going down the street and coming back and just sitting on the couch and being like... <laughs> you know, and, and that just extreme fear that overtakes you. 
And I remember going out at night because it was too hot. Um, because I would overheat really easy from, from my anxiety. I still overheat, but not nearly as easy as I did then. Um, and now, now I bike to places that I was afraid to drive then. You already just said, I bike to places now that I was afraid to drive then. And while I'm on my bike rides, I don't have anxiety. Okay? I have a goal, I have a purpose. And when I'm not on my, no, not on my, my rides, I still have a goal and a purpose, and that feels fantastic. So I just want to encourage you, don't keep telling yourself you can never do it. Instead, where is it? Take steps in the right direction. So I hope that this was encouraging. I hope that this was guiding for you. Have a great, um, what's the day? It's uh, Tuesday. Have a great rest of the week. I'll see ya.